Welcome to Oh My Hitbox. I'm Bonus Lizard. I'm Maxed Out. And today we're going to talk about Street Fighter Alpha 2. Uh, I'm a filthy o er so how about you tell me about Street Fighter Alpha 2? Oh, my hitbox. Street Fighter Alpha 2 was released in 1996, developed by Capcom and released on the CPS2 arcade hardware. Uh, in many ways, Street Fighter, or Street Fighter Alpha 2 was an attempt by Capcom to go back and reinvent and revitalize the series that had kind of grown stagnant with continuous revisions of Street Fighter 2. Not an uncommon problem with Capcom to release very similar games in succession. Right, this is a common complaint, something that people are still making fun of today. Super Ultra Dead Rising 3 Arcade Remix Hyper Edition EX Plus Alpha! But for me, certainly back in the day, I, I kind of lost interest in Street Fighter 2 and really fighting games as a whole with Super Street Fighter 2. I felt like everything had grown stagnant, boring, stale. Uh, and was ready to move on to other games. I felt like I had seen everything I needed to. There wasn't anything left. Uh, and it wasn't until Street Fighter Alpha 2, when I sat down with that, that I got pulled back into fighting games. And they've really held my interest ever since then. So this game has a really special place for me, since this is what got me back into fighting games. And even beyond that, I feel like it's a really fond love letter from Capcom for the series as a whole, given that they've gone back, pulled in characters, not just from Street Fighter 2, but also from the original Street Fighter, or Fighting Street, if you know it by that name, uh, as well as properly repatriating Final Fight into the Street Fighter lineage, with characters like Guy and Relento. Um, in addition to that, though, I mean, you've got some fantastic, fantastic remixes of classic Street Fighter themes. Uh, coming from Alpha 1, and Alpha 2 is really just a, a further refinement or revision on top of Alpha 1. It's bringing back Alpha counters, bringing back the, the segmented super bar, where it's made up of three levels, and you can do supers anywhere from level 1 to level 3, depending on how much meter you want to spend on that super. The big addition, though, in Alpha 2 uh, are the custom combos. Which possibly ruined Street Fighter as a series forever. And let's be fair, like, <laughs> any time custom combos are in any game, not just Capcom games, just any game, period, they always end up being incredibly broken and just introduce so many problems. Though, I mean, custom combos are a fun concept in that it's just like, okay, short time, do whatever you want for the moment, you can do whatever... You can style on people with it if you want. Right. It's you a... can actually do optimal combos to do damage. You can do goofy things. You can play Ken and just elbow someone a bunch of times. You can do what you want. That's the idea. The idea is that it puts control in your hands to do whatever you feel inclined to do, assuming you don't do it badly and then just get countered and counter hit. Yeah. And really the problem, though, is that... In this game, specific to this game, there's a few techniques that really make them above and beyond, just better than anything else you can do. The first one, the best known, the Valle custom combo, where the idea with that is once you act, if you activate a custom combo when your opponent is within sweep range, but they're standing, you will be able to hit them with a crouching attack before they can actually block it. This makes it naturally unblockable if it's within sweep range. Further, there's another technique called a blowout custom combo, where if essentially if you're right on top of someone and you activate, that activation will put your opponent into hit stun, which well, will then allow you to custom combo them. Is that one actually intended, though? That I don't know. I mean... Okay, because my I was assuming that one was intended while the Valle custom combo was very much unintended yes i mean that could certainly be the case but it remains that 
both options are incredibly powerful tools. And again, like the two of either one of those by itself probably negates any of the supers in the game. Yeah, which is a problem because it, if you have supers, why have supers if you don't need to use them? It's kind of with any game if you have supers, but if you can spend your meter on something vastly better than just using a super. Right. But on a very casual level, the supers are very satisfying at the very least. Yeah, they're fun to use. And um, you're not trying to hang someone for a lento and it never hit because you can't combo <laughs> into it. Yeah, but that's fine. I, I'm not going to pretend to be a high-level Alpha 2 player. If you want high-level, go watch Vic Viper. She's really good. We're not so good. We just play, you know, we just use supers. But still, the point remains that at a high level, the game kind of devolves into... It, who can land their custom combos better. On top of that, though, the character balance isn't particularly great. At the top, you've really got four characters. Chun-Li, Rose, Ryu, and Ken. You know, of those, three of those are like perennial, boring Street Fighter 2, well, Street Fighter in general characters. I mean, I'd almost say that Ken being good, well, Ken's no. good in Third Strike. Yeah, well. Ken is very good in Third Strike, way better than Ryu. I mean, Ken's less boring than Chen and Ryu to an extent. He's still boring. Yeah. My third strike yeah. bias might be speaking here, but yeah, the fact that it's the three most iconic Street Fighter Two characters are in the top four, and then you've got Rose as well. It doesn't and help Rose that Rose is good because of one button. That's not entirely true. Okay, fine. Rose is good against Chun Li because of one button. <laughs> Rose. That one button is incredible. That is the best button. Uh, for those who don't know, her crouching medium punch is probably the best normal in any Street Fighter ever. Might even be able to say any fighting game ever. Okay, I wasn't sure if you're going... Because I thought you were going to qualify it by saying any fighting game for a moment. I was like, I don't know about that. Yeah, I think that's debatable. But, but definitely in Street Fighter. Yeah, within the realm of Street Fighter, that's a good button. And... It should be noted that David Serlin won a tournament just using that button. Against chun -Li. Yes, against chun -Li. It was a specific match. He didn't play every single match in that tournament using Crouching Medium Punch. I low strong my little heart out. Probably over 90% of my moves were low strong done at a very particular range with a particular pattern of timing I dare not reveal. I had infinite patience to low strong forever, forcing Thal to defeat this trick. If he could beat it, we would then have to actually play, and at that point, surely he would win. But fortunately, he never did beat it. Spectators reported that I did an amazing 18 consecutive low strongs without either myself or Thal doing any other move. David Serlin, playing to win, becoming the champion. But beyond that, she also has the only, the single good super in the entire game at high level. Which would be? Uh, Soul Illusion. So what makes Soul Illusion so good? So Soul Illusion is a super where Rose summons a spirit double of herself. That's never broken. <laughs> no, that's never been broken before. Uh, no, it it's good for reasons that it obviously sounds like. But in this case, what it does is it creates a shadow that tacks on additional hits to any move that she does. So if she's got a normal move, that counts for one hit. With Soul Illusion, it's now doing two hits. So the advantage to this, aside from the obvious benefit of just tacking on more damage, it keeps the opponent in hit stun longer, which allows her to string together combos that she normally would not be able to. This allows her to output an incredible amount of damage in a very short period of time. Added that the fact that the most effective way to use it is just to stick with the level one version, not bothering with level two or three, just use level one, it's very meter efficient. So for her, it's entirely reasonable to use meter for that reason. Though, also worth noting that Rose also has the two best alpha counters in the entire game. So with all these factors combined, she's an extremely powerful character who's difficult to move in on, who just controls space and can pretty much do whatever she wants. And really the only character who gives her any trouble at all, to my knowledge, is Chun-Li. But... Regardless of all this, 
you know, if we go to Alpha, if we go to Alpha Two even at a casual level, the game's pretty well designed. If you're just playing just to play, it's like playing many other Street Fighter games, just with what you may consider a better art style than some of the other entries in the series. It has very beautiful pixel art in yeah. places. Yeah, I mean the the sprite art is extremely well done. An interesting cast. Now, again, like a very good, strong cast. Uh, notable inclusion being Sakura, this being the first game that she was in. So, and just a again a fantastic soundtrack with both the new tunes and the old ones being really really strong. And it even seemed like to an extent this was at a time when Capcom was like, hey, let's not tack the Street Fighter Two cast into everything. I mean, there's some of the Street Fighter 2 cast, but it's like, who, who needs Honda in every game? I, I like Honda, but you don't need them in every game. Right. I mean, they did bring back a, a few more Street Fighter 2 stalwarts with this. Again, Zangief and Dalsim uh, both came back in Alpha 2. Uh, so they are reaching a bit into that Street Fighter 2 lineage. But again, them also including characters like, like Rolento, for example. Yeah, I mean, and just playing it fairly recently in I have not been into fighting games nearly as long as you have. Just going and playing this game, I, I mean, I did not expect to even find Gen enjoyable to play. But now I'm like, oh, this is fun. I should be playing more Alpha 2. Why yeah. have I not played more Alpha 2? Yeah, I don't want to make it sound like I'm I'm negative on the game at all. Again, like I, Alpha 2 has a very special place in my heart. Uh, I'm extremely fond of this game. Um, anyone who's listening to this who like hasn't played Alpha 2 like seriously go play Alpha 2 it's a really great game it's worth your time it's only I only want to call out though that compared to uh, certain other fighting games from that era that have stood the test of time there are some definite rough edges like I can't make an unqualified recommendation of Alpha 2 it does come with caveats again the character balance not being as good as some other games the custom combos being incredibly incredibly overpowered um to the point where at high level play it's not as interesting a game i think as something like super turbo or third strike or even going outside of capcom things like samurai showdown 2 i feel like those are much stronger games overall but that's no reason to discount Alpha 2. Again, like if you haven't played Alpha 2, play Alpha 2. It's really good. If you have played Alpha 2, you probably need to go back and play some more Alpha 2. Well said. And all that leaves is the tier placement, which we're putting Street Fighter Alpha 2 as an easy A. Fighters with powerful legs are generally the best fighters in the game. Thank you for watching this episode of Oh My Hitbox. Make sure you head over to the comments if you want to leave a game suggestion or argue with us about our opinions. And if you want to hear more of us, you can check us out on twitch.tv slash bogus Additionally, in this video, footage was used from the two tournaments, Defend the North and Too Old Too Furious, and this footage belongs to Team Spooky. We're not that great at Alpha 2, and luckily Team Spooky is always there to stream and record all these old games. Later.